Hi traders, Justin here from FP Markets. Today I will be taking you through our free platform, Iris Investor. The first thing you'll see when you log in is that your screen is divided into four windows. We can change any of these windows by simply clicking on the title of the window and changing what it displays. Possibly the most important window to have open is your portfolio window. To bring this screen up, you hit this arrow and you go down to portfolio. This displays your gross liquidation value, which means if we were to liquidate your current positions, these positions here, this is how much money you would have left in your account. Your initial margin, which is the amount of money you have tied up in positions, and free equity is the difference between GLV and initial margin. This refers to the amount of money you have left to invest with. The screen will also show you your open positions. You can see here the bid ask last price, the price move and the percentage move for the day. You can also see the volume, so we've got minus 250 units of BHP which means that we're currently short BHP, long CBA 100 units and long West Farmers 500 units. Another, com another column worth noting is the profit column, so you can see here that today's profit is, is in this column here. Let's bring up the charting in a separate window. Again, to do this, simply click on the window tile and press chart. So, hit chart. Let's type in a stock, CBA, is what I'll use for the example. We can change the chart to a candlestick chart by clicking on the chart line type, which is this button here, and clicking candlestick. You can also change it to open high, low, close, high, low, close, or just the close price, which is a line graph. We can change the time frame of the chart from monthly through to intraday down to five minutes. By doing this, we just hit the clock and again hitting these buttons here. There are separate zoom options from each of the time frames, but the intraday chart will only display data for that day. So this is data for today. We can add indicators by simply clicking on indicator and selecting which indicators we require. So you can see here that I already have volume on the chart. If I wanted to add an additional indicator, I just hit this button here, choose the indicator I want. Let's choose a moving average, for example. If I then want to change the periodicity of the moving average, I just edit and let's say 21 day moving average. And that will change it. I can then add another subchart, so let's do an RSI, 14 days. You can see that there. Let's now bring up a depth window. So in a different panel, you can see I already have the depth window up here. If I type in CBA, this will show me the 10 highest bidders and 10 highest sellers for CBA, as well as the last 10 trades. This data here is live and displays the real bids and asks in the market for this particular stock. Let's now bring up a quote window. So hitting this right arrow I go to quote this is where we can create a watch list and save it to do this we simply enter the stocks one by one that we want to watch and and hit enter so let's make a watch list for banks once we've put all the stocks we want in the watch list in we just need to go to this button here and hit save watch list you then name it and hit OK. This will save your watch list for you. If you have saved your watch list, you just hit the I button again and it will be there under user watch list. You can see that Banks is there. You'll also notice that there are some system watch lists saved. Also, if you want to bring up the top 200 for example on the ASX, you just type in forward slash XJO. Now from this screen, what you can do is sort by biggest movers or, or biggest fallers for the day just by clicking here so this is percentage movers this is that have gone up and now I've sorted by percentage fallers for the day so this is a really good way of getting an indication of which stocks are moving the most for the day now that we're all set up let's go ahead and place a trade so before I do that let's bring up the order pad 
So this will show us where all of our pending orders are. Okay, so I can see I've changed this from all orders to pending and open orders and refresh the page. So if I want to place a trade, what I'll do is in the depth, I might type in CBA. This will bring up the market depth of CBA. I can hit buy. From this screen here, you can see that all of the information is live. Here it'll tell you your initial margin. So on CBA, the margin rate is 5% and whether or not the stock is shortable. Okay, in this case, yes, we do have a shorting ability for Commonwealth Bank. So next thing you do is type in how many units you want to buy. In this case, let's buy 500 units. Okay, now as soon as I update that, and update the order price. So in this case, let's change the order type to market to limit. Now what this means is that the order will get filled at the best possible price in the market when you place the order. As long as there is liquidity there, the full order will get filled. If there isn't liquidity at that price step, then the order will be partially filled and the remaining volume will be turned into a limit order at the price that the original volume was filled. The other way of doing it is setting a limit style order. So this is where you choose the price that you're willing to accept. So for example, if the current price of CBA is $73.10, $73.13, let's say I don't want to get into the stock until it falls back down to $73. Also note that everything here is denoted in cents, so there's no decimal place. Moving on, you can set the order to be good till cancelled or end of day or even choose a date that you want the order to expire. This here is the order summary pad. So you can see here that the trade value is $36,500 at $73 times 500 units. The margin required is 5%, so 5% 5 of 36,500 is $1,825. Now this part here is very important. Before you place your trade, you need to make sure that you have at least the $1,825 in free equity available, otherwise the trade will fail. Okay. Once you've checked that, the next thing you need to do is just hit buy. Now do remember that there is no confirmation screen. As soon as you hit buy this little green button down here, the trade will go through. All right. So if I hit buy, you get an uh, order is completed screen. So let's close that. Now let's refresh our page. You can see here in our order pad, our pending and open orders, we have CBA, a buy for 500 units at a price of $73. Remaining volume, 500. Done volume, zero. Okay. So this is saying that we're waiting for the stock to come back in price before, before it gets filled. Let's use another example where we use a market's limit style order. So what we would do is, let's use BHP. If I want to buy, we'll use 100 units. I'll change this to market to limit. Now, you can see that I'm already short 250 units of BHP. If I buy 100, that'll aggregate the position and it'll mean that I will be short 150 units. So if I hit buy, Close that, refresh the page. You can now see that the aggregated position is short 150 units. Now, the last thing to go through is the contingent orders and how to place them. To do this, we simply bring up the contingent order pad. So in any one of your four boxes, you bring up the contingent order pad. Using contingent orders, we can place stop losses and take profits. If we wanted to set a stop loss for a long position, we would simply select sell, go through the instructions, and hit sell. We can see our contingent order now sitting in the contingent order pad waiting to be triggered. So let's set a stop loss for Commonwealth Bank. Oops. Because we are long 100 units of CBA, we want to make sure that our condition 
is less than or equal to. So contingency price, we would usually leave that set to the last traded price as opposed to the bid or the ask price. Leave that to last. Uh, because we're long, as I said, we need to have this the condition set to less than or equal to. So this is saying uh, if we choose a contingent price here of $70, this is saying that if the last price is less than or equal to $70, then our contingent order will trigger. All right. This bottom section is telling you what the order that we're putting through into the market will look like. So we make sure that the volume is the same, 100 units. In this case, let's choose a market to limit style order, which means as soon as the, the price of CBA is $70, this order will trigger for 100 units to be sold into the market uh, at a market's limit. So again, you've got your order summary down here. If you hit sell, then that's that's completed. You can see here in the contingent order pad that that has also been updated. So the Commonwealth Bank, the last price is less than or equal to $70, then we will sell market to limit. Of course, there are other great features of this platform, but that should be enough to get you started and help you feel confident using the platform. If you have any further questions, please don't he hesitate to get in touch with us on 028252 6800.